have a home prepared where the saints abide just over in the glory land and i long to be by my savior's side just over in the glory land just over in the glory land i'll join the happy angel band just over in the glory land just over in the glory land there with the mighty host i'll stand just over in the glory land i am on my way to those mansions fair just over in the glory land there to sing god pray and his glory share just over in the glory land just over in the glory land i'll join the happy angel band just over in the glory land just over in the glory land there with the mighty host i'll stand just over in the glory land what a joyful thought that my lord i'll see just over in the glory land and with kinder and safe there forever be just over in the glory land just over in the glory land i'll join the happy angel pan just over in the glory land just over in the glory land there with the mighty host i'll stand just over in the glory land with that blood wash throw i'll shout and sing just over in the glory land to Christ my Lord and King just over in the glory land just over in the glory land I'll join the happy angel band just over in the glory land just over in the glory land there we the mighty host I'll stand just over in the glory land. Let me walk, blessed Lord, in the way thou hast gone, leading straight to a land above, giving cheer everywhere to the sad and alone. Feel Oh, fill my day every day with love as I walk with that heavenly dove. Let me go all the while with a song and smile. Fill my way every day with love. Keep me close to the side of my Savior and God. Never let me in darkness roll. Keep my fat free from rat. And my soul satisfied, fill my way every day with love. Fill my way every day with love. As I walk with that heavenly dove, let me go all the while with a song and smile. Fill my way every day with love. Soon the race will be o'er and I'll travel no more. In my home above, let me sing, blessed King, all the way to the shore. Fill my way every day with love. Oh, fill my way every day with love. As I walk with that heavenly dove, let me go all the while with a song and a smile. Fill my way every day. With 
heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a rich like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood atoning you stand with me as we go to the Lord in prayer, please? <clears throat> Continue praying for Doug Langley and Raymond Lawrence, Steve Hoke and Elaine Grigsby, Daniel Williams, Ruth and Carol Robertson, Carol Klein, Mike McMullen, Benjamin Baker, and jo Joanne Ledbetter, and Mary Holmes. All of these folks need the Lord's touch. And... Uh, Betty Rogers and Loretta Hughes are shut-ins. Let's continue praying for all of these folks. If you have a need, would you raise your hand tonight? The Lord understands all of our situations. Let's pray together. Father, we're so grateful and so thankful for what you do for us. God, what a wondrous, wondrous Savior we have. Thank you for being with us and keeping us bringing us again to your house tonight, Lord. I pray, God, your spirit pour out in this service, O oh God. I pray, Lord, for each one who is in need tonight, all those who are sick and afflicted, I pray, God, that you would touch them and raise them up. 
pray, God, that you will do a great and mighty thing, O oh God. Lord, I pray for each need that is represented in this house tonight, O oh God. Pray, Lord, that you would move in a powerful way, undertake to, in every situation, Lord. Bless our pastor tonight as he brings the word of God to us. God, I thank you for all your wondrous gifts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.
precious name. We thank you, Lord, for all that you, O oh God, have provided, all that you've done, O oh God. Lord, we just rejoice in this beautiful day, Lord. Lord, we extend to you our thanksgiving and all honor, O oh Lord, to your precious name. For, well, Lord, you've been so good. We worship you, Lord, in this house. We worship you, Lord. We give you praise. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Well, praise the Lord. How many is good, glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Praise God. It's a good thing to be in the house of the Lord. Let me just go ahead and read my text while you're standing tonight. Uh, we're looking continually or con continuing our series on the pathway of pleasing God. Uh, and so tonight we're looking at living a holy life living a holy life. First Thessalonians 4 and 3 says, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. Then verse 7 says, For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Unto holiness. Let's pray. Gracious Father, we ask your Lord to help us minister your word in this place tonight. I pray that we would have ears to hear what the Spirit would say to us. Lord, not only hear, but Lord, receive and apply it to our hearts and lives. Lord, mentor us and mold us into your image. Lord, we need you, O oh God, more today than we ever have before. And so we look to you, O oh God, and Lord, we put for these instructions. Let us, O oh God, be spiritually minded here tonight as we give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' precious name. And everybody said, Amen and amen. You may be seated. Want to remind you that uh, the WM Silent Auction is taking place downstairs. If you haven't went down and done some window shopping, you need to do that tonight or, or very early Sunday morning. Uh, the deadline will be after the AM service this coming Sunday, and so uh, you can pick up those who win those auctions will... Uh, you can pick those up immediately after the AM service this Sunday. Isn't that right, Sister Kaylin? And uh, just to remind you also that our Senior Sunday is May the 15th. Uh, we will be honoring Sister Sarah Hammond and her achievements and uh, uh, finishing uh, throughout high school and going into her future. And we'll be learning some of her, her, her vision and goals for the future as well. So be sure, and if you would... Bring cards of appreciation, congratulations to her, and let's make this a special day for her. Also, the CWAs will, uh, family night, will be here at the church, May the 21st, and I think we'll assemble here in the fellowship hall, and I uh, may be going outside for outside festivities or cooking outside, or I don't, I'm not sure exactly, uh, but there will be some more information on that by this Sunday. Also, the prime timers are outing will be May the 21st, that day, trip to Cattle Valley to go to the flea market and eat at Fat Boys. And so the bus will be leaving the church at 10 a.m., lunch at 1230. And if you would like to, uh, to uh, come um, only for lunch, you can do that. But if you want to ride the bus and to go for the for the full activity, there's a sign-up sheet in the back for that. Also a reminder that May the 29th will be Red, White, and Blue Sunday. Uh, we're playing a, a, a great day that day. The Royal Rangers will be helping us out during the service. We'll be honoring uh, or pr uh, pr paying our respects to those fallen soldiers that have uh, given their all 
uh, for the freedom of our country. And also we, uh, we will have the Banks family will be here uh, for that service. And we will be eating after the service, uh, have hamburgers and hot dogs outside uh, for that day. And so uh, we are enjoying that day as well. Well, praise the Lord. We're just busy, aren't we? Just a busy church. Amen. Well, glory. Praise God. <clears throat> Pathway to pleasing God. How many knows that we need to strive to please God? I know I've said that every time we've looked at this, but we need to strive to please the Lord and live our lives in a way that is pleasing to God. You see, in our text tonight, Paul uses the words sanctification and holiness, which means that we as children of God are to be uh, uh, set apart and living our lives pleasing to the Lord. Holiness means dedicated or devoted to the service of God. It means consecrated. Uh, sanctification means to make holy, set apart as uh, sacred, consecrate. Uh, it can also mean to purify or uh, be free from sin. Uh, to make something is to uh, go through a process. How many knows that, that when you build a house, you go through a process? And uh, as you're building that house, you're adding some things to it, and then you're trimming some things uh, off of it. And that's the way the process is in our lives. In our lives, there's being some things that are being taken away or cutting off or, or knocked off the rough edges, but there are also some things that are being added to and that, are, that are, are mentoring and molding us into the image of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So sanctification is the process of becoming holy. Holy. Romans 6 and 19 says, I speak after the manner of men, because of the infirmity of your flesh, for as ye have yielded your member servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now, after you have been saved, now yield your member servants to righteousness unto holiness. You see, when you were saved, the Spirit of God entered into your life. It sealed you. And it le it's leading you, it's directing you in the ways of the Lord. It's teaching you, it's mentoring you, it's knocking rough edges off of you, it's speaking to you and helping you uh, become the image of Jesus Christ. Amen. How many of those that uh, are realizes that through your Christian life, through your new birth, that you have changed a lot? Can you say you've changed a lot? I have changed a lot. And the older I get, it seems like my change is speedily uh, speeding up a little bit. I don't know, you know, I don't know what all that's about, but uh, maybe, uh, maybe I'm thinking uh, more clearly. Uh, this gray hair may have something to do with it. Reckon? Amen. Now, some of you have got y'all's covered up. <laughs> now, I know. But uh, as we live... We're growing closer and nigher to the Lord. And the Lord gets us ready through His grace and His mercy. God gets us ready, amen, to come before Him. Amen. He does. That's His grace and His mercy and His blessing. We may have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior 30, 40, or 50 years ago. But, amen, the closer we get to, the, to our divine appointment, God really steps in and gets us ready to come before him. And that is grace and that is mercy. When we were sinners, we used to use our, our members of our body. We used our eyes and our ears, our mouth, our hands and our feet in sinful ways uh, to pacify the flesh. But now we have been made righteous through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And we are to use these same members that, are, that have been sanctified and that are being sanctified for the use to glorify God. Amen. We use our eyes to look into the Word of God and to study His Word. The Bible said that each and every one of us are to study to show ourselves approved. Amen. To study the Word of God. 
We use our ears to hear the gospel preached as we assemble together, as we hear the Word of God. How many knows that faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God? And we use our lips and our mouth and our tongue to praise the Lord and to give our witness unto God. How many knows it's God's desire for each and every one of us to praise God? Amen. Amen. We praise Him not only in song, but we praise Him and worship Him in our living, in our living, in our actions, in our reactions, in, in, in our attitude in life. Because in our praise and in our worship and in our holy living, then we minister to those that we're around. He's called each and every one of us to be ministers of the gospel one way or the other. We minister with, I mean, our mouths, with our lips, our tongues. We minister with with all of our members, using our hands to bless others and serve the Lord. And we use our feet to attend church and be faithful to the house of God and fulfill acts of righteousness and holiness. You see, we are not conformed to this world, amen, because we're not of this world. So we're not to conform to this world. We've been changed. We've been made brand new. We have been actually in the spiritual realm. We have been already been taken out of this world and separated. Amen. And we are being more separated. Amen. And through sanctification and holiness unto God. We are not to conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. By reading the Word of God, studying the Word of God, and knowing God and His likes and His dislikes, and amen, and knowing and learning how to be pleasing unto the Lord. And so as we have seen in the last few weeks, we are the men and the women of faith. We're to live in faith. We are to follow after righteousness and, and right standing with God. We are to become more spiritually minded as we study the Word of God and meditate on the Word of God and apply the Word of God to our lives. And then when situations and circumstance arises, then go to the Word of God and, and confess and stand upon the promise of God. And then we are to fear God and live, fear God in all of God, reverence God, and to live a holy life before the Lord. Now, 1 Peter 1 and 14 says, As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust of in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Amen. Sometimes you've got to bite your lip. Sometimes you've got to hold it back. Amen. Be a blessing. Amen. Put a smile on your face, even if you have to paint it on there. Praise God. How many know some, we're, we're to endure hardness as a, as a good soldier of faith? We're to endure it. Amen. And we're to put and be wise and, 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 and walk in the ways of the Lord and be blessing to others. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And if ye call on the Father, with, uh, who without respect of person judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear, in awe, in respect of the Lord. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation, received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot. The only we, reason we are here today and here tonight and enjoying the love and the peace and the joy and the blessings of the Lord is because of the price that was paid on Calvary. Jesus Christ came and he, he came as a, uh, to represent God and also humanity. But he came and he laid the attributes of God aside. He took upon human flesh and he was tempted and tried just like you. That's the reason that he can have sympathy, that he can have grace and mercy to you and I because he was also as uh, tempted 
amen, in this life. And so he knows how the enemy tries to tempt and how to steal, kill, and destroy. And so he is there with love, amen. He's there with love and compassion and blessing to lead us and to help us through these things. But we are who we are today because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ, because of his grace, his mercy, and his blessing. Hallelujah. Now, we know that God is a holy God, and we, his children, are to be holy as well. We are to be imitators of God, imitators of God. How many remembers when your kids were small, you would see them walk across the floor in, in daddy's boots? Amen. They'd put, they'd put them boots on, them boots would come all the way up to there, and they'd be clogging across there with them boots on. Amen. I've had my, just not long ago, I, uh, uh, David, I, you'll rem, you'll. You'll enjoy this, but I had my boots and my hunting boots and stuff were on the side, and I have no idea where he came up with my light, but I looked outside, and, and uh, J-Man, I mean, not J-Man, Javo, I looked out there, he had my old hunting boots, my big rubber boots on, he had my coon hunting light on, and he had his BB gun, and he was out there in the backyard. Now, I, I, didn't, I, I dare not say what he was doing, okay? I think he was bird hunting. I'm not sure, but he was hunting. Amen. But uh, he was imitating. Amen. He's, he saw his dad with those hunting boots on and, and, gun, and guns. And he had saw Pop, I mean, dressed up and decked out for coon hunting and those kind of things. And, and so he imitated. So we're to be imitators of God as his beloved children. And we are called to live a life worthy of the calling that we have received. How I many knows that we're called to be priests of the kingdom of God? Holy, holy people. Amen. Unto the Lord. We are made holy, useful for the master, uh, to the master, and prepared to do, to, to do any good work when we, uh, when we cleanse ourselves from the evil desires. In other words, God can then use us for building uh, of his kingdom. Amen. How many knows that God cannot use someone with a tainted witness, a tainted testimony? You've got to keep yourself holy before God. In other words, you can't be like some people that I know, uh, and I, I'm not in this church, now I'm not saying anybody in this church, but, but you uh, cursing and using foul language one minute and the next minute inviting you to church. Amen. We can't do that. That's, that. that's not a good thing, okay? But as we live holy and righteous, and as we keep our character under submission unto God, then we have a power and we have effectiveness in our witness and in our testimony. When we're tried and when we're tested and when we go through storms and situations and circumstances and, and we keep our chin lifted up, it lifted up and we honor God and know that God is faithful and going to bring us through and we walk in joy, we walk in peace and we don't let the devil lick the sweet off our candy, amen, or, or disrupt our testimony. We can then be a witness to those that watch our lives. Amen. People watch you and they, they read you and they know that, that in times that they need prayer, there is somewhere they can go to receive prayer. Amen. So through our behavior, we are witnesses to those around us in hopes that they too will come to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We are sanctified now listen, we are sanctified by this, by the atoning work of the blood of Jesus on the cross. That's what sanctifies us. Amen. We are sanctified by the transforming ministry of the Holy Spirit that enters into our lives after we are saved. The Spirit of God enters in. Now, I'm not talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We receive that also. But when we are, we are saved, the Spirit of God enters into our hearts and lives, and the spiritual candle is lit inside of us. Amen. And Jesus Christ takes his abode in our hearts and in our lives. 
And then we also uh, receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and then that anointing is upon us to go and to minister and to be a witness unto the lost and dying world. But the atoning work of the blood of Jesus, amen, we are sanctified by the blood of Christ. We're sanctified by the Holy Spirit that lives in us. And then we're sanctified by the Word of God which cleanses and instructs us and mentors us and molds us and cleans us up and knocks the rough edges off. Amen. And then we're encouraged. We are sanctified by the encouragement and the accountability of fellow believers coming to church and assembling together with your brothers and sisters in Christ with like precious faith. How many knows there's a benefit to that? Amen. There's a strength to that. There's a power to that. Amen. There's a help to that. There's hope. There's blessing. Amen. As we assemble together. It's not God's will for us to try to live a isolated Christian life. Amen. The Bible tells us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves. So we're to come to church, amen, and we're to encourage one another. We're to, to love on one another. We're to bless one another. And we're to hold one another accountable. 1 Peter 3 and 15 says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. You got to be ready to give a testimony. Give a re uh, give, uh, be ready to tell somebody, amen, what God's done in your life. You see, our sanctification is an inward work. It's an inward work, but it affects us outwardly. It affects us outwardly, our actions, our reactions. The Holy Spirit working in you will change your heart and your life. Amen. Like the old song said, it'll make you love everybody. It'll make you love everybody. Now notice our part in this. Our part in this is to read and study the Word of God and to pray. That is our part. We are to confess our sins Amen. And keep a good conscience. Keep our relationship, amen, with the Lord untainted. Amen. Keep our confidence and our relationship. We do this by spending time in the Word of God, by prayer, and by confessing our sins, by renewing our minds, thinking upon the Word of God, meditating on the goodness of God, musing on the goodness of the Lord. We do it by living out our uh, faith daily, in our daily lives, living our faith, and by not losing heart and doing good, not growing weary and well-doing, and then also in daily examining our hearts and our lives. You see, sanctification is a daily process, a daily commitment, a lifestyle of faith in God and His promises following after righteousness, by protecting our intimate relationship with God. You see, we hold, we hold captive our thoughts. We hold captives our thoughts and think on the goodness of God. It is fearing God with a reverence, respect, and having an awe of His greatness. It's being mindful of what we allow our eyes to look at and what we allow our ears to hear and what we think upon, what we use our mouth to say or what we do with our hands and our feet. Amen. We are to live a holy life. Amen. Taking God's Word and the example of Jesus and live for the Lord daily, being transformed into His image. Amen. Uh, 2 Corinthians 3 and 18 says, But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. You see, there's an old song that used to say this, and I've heard preachers say this a lot too. Amen. That I know that I'm not what I want to be, and I'm not what... I'm going to be, but thank God I'm not what I used to be. Amen. Amen. I didn't know there's a song, but I've heard people say that a lot. But there's a song, and that's the words in the course of the song. 
But Philippians 3 and, uh, and 12 says, Not as though I had already attained, neither were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. How many know in this Christian life there's some things we need to forget? There's some things we need to forget. Amen. The enemy will try, the accuser of the brethren will try to bring to remembrance the things when, when so-and-so said something that hurt your feelings or when Sister Lollipop done something that broke your heart or, or uh, uh, Miss Doubtfire, she came and, and tried to put a wet blanket on your relationship with God or some things that disrupted your, your thinking or your growing in faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that hurt you during the time or during along the way. We have to forget those things and put those things aside and give them to the Lord and, and walk in forgiveness and blessing unto the Lord. We have to continually bring into captivity every thought into the, the obedience of Christ and speak the things of God and keep ourselves, amen, submitted to the Lord and humble ourselves before the Lord Jesus Christ. Sanctification and holiness is the good fight of faith. It is the fight that we face every day. You see, we know that it rains on the just and the unjust alike. Bad things happen to Christians and, and, good thing, and bad things happen to non-Christians alike. But we, uh, but we respond, how we respond makes the difference. Now, C.W. Lewis said, Life in Christ is not immunity from difficulties, but it's peace in the midst of difficulties. Amen. He gives us peace in the midst of the storm. Our sanctification is not done for us, but we have to do the fighting. Amen. We give, uh, but God gives us the ability to do it. From the moment we believe, we are justified by faith, we are born again of the Spirit of God. We then are given the ability to fight the fight of faith. Amen. Again, C.W. Lewis said uh, once, uh, gave an example of sanctification. He, he gave this example as a young man being disciplined for uh, something that he had done. He said it once it would be nice to and fairly true to say that from that time forth, Estes was a different boy. But to be strictly accurate, he began to be a different boy. He had relapses from time to time. There were still many days when he could be very tiresome, but most of those I shall not notice because the cure had begun. The cure had begun. When we get saved and accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, Amen. We have just begun. The cure has just begun. When somebody comes into our church, and I know I've preached a lot of times about that we have to accept them as is. Amen. They come in and they get saved and give their hearts and lives to the Lord. But that don't mean that, that when they get from, from that altar that they're immediately perfect. Amen. Amen. They have to grow in grace. They have to grow in sanctification, in a process and blessing. Amen. You see, when I first got saved, there were some things that, uh, uh, well, when I joined the church, uh, uh, my pastor, he didn't, he didn't condemn me for this at all. But, and I, didn't, I was raised in a non-Pentecostal church, and so it just wasn't, it was just a, uh, it was an okay thing in the church I was raised in. But well, when I joined the church, I remember, and somebody said something afterwards jokingly, but after I was up there uh, getting the right hand of fellowship, everybody passing down, amen, but I didn't realize that you know, there was something wrong with it, but I had cigarettes in my pocket, <laughs> amen. But they all came around and shook my hand and hugged my neck. Nobody condemned me. Nobody, amen, said anything bad about me. 
Amen. But there was times, amen, that I had to uh, uh, grow in grace until the Lord speak to my heart. And it wasn't long until I realized, hey, this is not good. Amen. I remember uh, driving home one day and God was convicting me uh, uh, of smoking. And I, I didn't smoke a lot, but I smoked a little bit. But the Lord was convicting me of it. And I'm telling you, it was, it was eating me up, uh, David. It was tearing me up. And I had this pipe that I had bought. And it was an expensive pipe, a real nice pipe. Amen. And so I was driving across the canal bridge that day and I rolled down the window and I took that pipe and I threw it as far as I could out in that water. Amen. How many knows you couldn't fetch that back? Amen. Amen. You couldn't do it. It's kind of like I told somebody the other day that was a, my wife's grandfather said he was in a, a red hot Pentecostal revival one night and said they were having a Jericho march and said they were marching and mar marched up on the platform and there was a big window on the, both sides of the platform and they had the windows up and no screens and said those old timers were walking around and all around there in their overalls and they were pulling out and their bibs pulling out they're chewing tobacco and throwing it out the window and they were taking their cigarettes and cigarette lighters and throwing them out the window and their snuff and throwing them out the window hey man my my uh, uh, wife's grandpa said about midnight he heard something and looked out there and there was flashlights all over the place out there trying <laughs> trying to find <fight. laughs> well that's not the way we do Amen. We grow in grace. Amen. God ministers us. He convicts us and he knocks those rough edges off. We know that God is holy, that Jesus is holy. The angels are called holy. Ephesians 3 and 5 tells us that the prophets and the angels and uh, the apostles are, were holy. And Psalms 34 and 9 says the believers are called saints, meaning holy. Meaning holy. 1 Peter 2 and 9 says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Amen. When we were saved, we were made new in Christ Jesus. We were sanctified in Christ. But we also are daily being sanctified. We all have relapses from time to time. And we all make mistakes. But God is faithful to forgive us all because the cure has begun. And as long as we don't quit, as long as we don't give up, we too are and will be holy in Christ Jesus. Amen. We have all been given the same standard of holiness. There's only one standard of holiness. Amen. Jesus is our only standard of holiness. He is the tuning fork of holiness. A.W. Tozer gave this example. He said, if you had a hundred, a hundred pianos, and you tuned each piano with that one tuning fork, then when all of those pianos, if they were ever brought together, all of those hundred pianos would be in tune. But you cannot tune those hundred pianos with one another. You have to tune them with the, with the standard, with the tuning fork. Amen. So each one of us, we have to line up with the one and only standard, and that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And when we do that, when we walk in tune with our Lord in Jesus Christ, then we can enter into this sanctuary, and when we do, we will all be in unity and all be in tune with the Lord. Amen? Praise God. One day we will all be gathered together as, uh, as we have remained faithful and fought the fight of faith when we get to heaven, we will all be tuned in tune with Jesus. This is holiness, and holiness pleases God. 1 John 3 and 2 says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when we shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Amen. Real glory. Would you stand tonight? Amen. You see, if that's your desire to be holy, amen, take these instructions. Keep a watch over your, your eyes, your ears, and your mouth, and your hands, and your feet. Keep a watch over your lives and walk in holiness. 
walk in purification unto God. And one day we too will be joined with her Lord. Amen. And be known as holy. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you, Lord, for what you've done for us. What you, O oh God, have made provision for that we can walk in holiness in you that we can take your example, that we can live, O oh God, and be pleasing unto you. Lord, let us, O oh Lord, purify ourselves. Lord, taking you as our example. Lord, by walking as you would walk in humility, in love, and in patience, and act in holiness. Lord, let us clothe ourselves in your righteousness. And Lord, keep ourselves, Lord, from this world that we might be continually transformed in your image. Lord, we give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Would you come and find you a place to pray tonight? Let's just pray a little bit. We're a little early. Amen. Let's come and seek the face of God. If you have a need that you would like for us to pray with you about, would you come and allow us to...